Good morning, class. Today's lesson is 3.6. Today we're going to choose a multiplication method. We've done quite a few different ones. So our essential question today is how can you find and record products of two-digit numbers? Let's unlock the problem. Did you know using math can help, you pre help prevent you from getting sunburned? Well, the time it takes to burn without sunscreen multiplied by the SPF or sun protection factor is the same time you can stay in the sun safely without sunscreen. If today's UV index is eight, Aaron will burn in 15 minutes without sunscreen. If Aaron puts on lotion with SPF 25, how long will she be protected? Well, first let's underline the sentence that tells us how we're gonna find the answer. We need to find out that the time it takes to burn without sunscreen multiplied by the SPF. That's ultimately we need to do. Um, so what we're gonna do is let's circle the numbers that we're gonna need to use. So we're going to need to know that Erin's gonna burn in 15 minutes without the sunscreen, right? And that if she puts on the SPF of 25, so that's what we're trying to figure out is the 15 and the 25. And what operation are we gonna use? Well, they've already said multiplied by, right? So multiplied, so we do multiplication. So one way is we can use partial product. So we can take, we've been doing this for a while now, and we can kind of break it apart. So I can take the 25, put my tens here, which is 20, my ones here, which is five, because remember 20 plus five is 25. And then I could take my 15, and I can break, put my tens here and my ones there, so 10, plus five is 15. So then when I do 20 times 10, well two times one is two, and then I have my two zeros, and then I have 10 times five, which is 50, and then again I have 20 times five in this one, right? And two times five is 10, and I have my one zero, and now I have five times five, which is 25. So when I'm doing that over here, basically my 10 times the two tens or 20 tens was 200. That was what was in this box. And then this box is my 10 times my five ones, which is 50. And then I've got my five tens times my two tens, which is 100. And then I've got my five ones times my five ones, which is 25. Make sure you line everything up when you're adding. So you have five plus zero plus zero plus zero is five. Five plus two is seven and two plus one is three. So the answer is 375 minutes. So if she applies the lotion um, that has that SPF, she will be safe for 375 minutes before she either needs to reapply or will be getting sunburned. So we're doing different ways. So another way is to use regrouping, which we did last time. So our first problem is 15 times 25. So step one, we're gonna be using the five ones we're doing the ones position first, <clears throat> and we're gonna multiply it by the 25. So five times five is 25. I put my five here, and I put my two here, because I have to regroup. And then I have five times two, which is 10, plus my two that I regrouped is 12. So for my ones, I've got 125. Now, I'm multiplying 10, right? Because I've already done this one. This is essentially multiplying it by 10. One, um, 110 times 25. Well, I know 120 times 25 is 25, um, but I do have my zero, so I'm gonna make sure I put my zero on my space saver, some teachers will call it. Um, so one times five is five, and one times two is two. I didn't really um, add that up very well, or line that up very well, but now you're going to add them up. So five plus zero is five, 2 plus 5 is 7, and 2 plus 1 is 3. Because essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking my 25 and I'm multiplying it times the 5 ones and getting a partial product, and then I'm taking my 25 and I'm multiplying it times the 10, the 110, and I'm getting my partial product and adding them together, just like when we did with the boxes. All right, they do want us to estimate, and it's just to you know make sure that our number's reasonable. So 57 is close to 60 and 43 is close to 40. Those are numbers I can do in my head. So six times four is 24, and then I have one, two zeros, 
So my number should be close to 2,400. So let's use partial products. So with using partial products, they want us to do the, they want us to do the tens first. They want us to do five tens times four tens. So that's essentially saying five, or saying 50 times 40. And when you multiply 50 times, or when you do that, you get um, 2,000, right? Because five times four is 20. And then I have my two zeros. Okay, so next, we've done the, the tens position. Now they want us to multiply the 50 times the three, right? So 50 times three, well, three times five is 15. And then I have my one zero. Next. So you want to do the bigger numbers first. Now I'm, I finished multiplying all my tens position. Now they want me to multiply my ones position. So I've got seven times 40 and seven times four. So seven times 40. Well, seven times four is 28. Oops, 28. Let me erase that. And I have one zero. And then finally, I'm going to multiply my ones by my ones. So now I'm doing my ones times my one so three times seven which is 21 and now i'm going to add them all together so i get one eight plus two is ten plus the five is fifteen regroup two plus one is three plus one is four and there we go now if you're using regrouping it's a little bit simpler right so you're going to do seven times the three which is 21 then you do seven times the four. Now this is the way moms and dads have been wanting to do with you for a really long time, right? They're always trying to show you this, um, but this is the actual algorithm that you'll use in fifth grade. So seven times four is 28, plus my two is 2930. Okay, so now I'm done with my ones position. So I'm gonna cross it out. So I'm just gonna erase that I did that. So now I'm in my tens position. Now, this is five times three, but it's really 50 times three. Remember whenever you have that extra zero? So you put this, I call it a space saver, but we know that it's really not five, it's 50, and that's why we have this zero here. So five times three is 15. Put my one here, my five here. Five times four is 20, plus the one is 21. The reason they're doing it on this graph paper is so we line it up nicely. So we've got one plus zero is one, five plus zero is five, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then 2 plus nothing is 2. So same answer, same answer. I could also, you know, if this, I know this is working for some of you, so you could take and you could do 40 and 3, and you could do 50 and 7, and you could multiply and then add up your four partial products if that works. That's essentially what we did here. These are just the squares that are in here, okay? So whatever works for you, I want to make sure that you're, um, just getting the concept. That's what's most important. So how do you know your answer is reasonable? Well, my answer is $2,451, which is close to the estimate that we had of $2,400. Next, let's look at the partial products and regrouping methods above. How are the partial products 2,150 related to 2,150? Well, the sum of 2,150 is equal to 2,150 in the regrouping model. How are the partial products 280 and 21 related to 301? Well, the sum of 280 and 21 are equal to 301 in the regrouping model, or regrouping method. So 280 plus 21 is 301. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more problem with you, and I'm gonna use the regrouping model because I know that's the one that our parents are really wanting us to use at home because it's the one that, um, you know, I did as a kid, and I think we all did as kids. Um, but it is the algorithm that is really for fifth grade, but we're going to go ahead and do it now. So we are going to take the nine first. We're doing our ones. We're going to multiply it times the four and then times the 50, right? So nine times four is 36. I regroup my three. Nine times five is 45 plus the three regrouped is 48. And if you need to use graph paper, I do have some in my cabinet, if that helps you to line up your numbers, because that's usually where I find that most kids are making their mistakes. They're not lining it up. So now that I've done my ones, now I'm gonna do my tens. Okay, now, remember, this isn't two, it's really 20 times 54. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one zero down here, right? Because 20, I'm gonna have a zero in my answer. 
Um, some people call that a space saver, but that's why that number is there is because it's really 20, it's not two. So um, the two times four is eight, and now I do two times 10, or two times five, which is 10. Okay, and now I'm going to add those numbers up because those are my two partial products. So six plus three is six, eight plus eight is 16, regroup my one, four plus one is five, and one plus nothing is one. So we get 1,566. If you feel more comfortable and you're not quite ready for that, you can still kind of go back. So I know a lot of you are getting really good at doing, you know, 50, four, 29. And if you want to do your partial products this way, like we've done in the past, right? That's fine. So in this model, we'd have two times five, which is 10, and I'd have my two zeros, so that's a thousand. Four times two is eight, plus my one zero is 80. Then I have 50 times the nine, so five times nine is 45, plus my zero. Nine times four is 36, and then I add those up. On this side, I'd get 1,080. This side, I'd get a zero and zero, three and five is eight, 480. And then when I add both those partial products together, 480, I get 0, 16, 5. So I get the same answer. Um, it's just a little bit longer to draw it out. This is a little bit quicker. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then like yesterday, I'm not going to do Think Central. Um, you're going to do problems in the homework book. And then I'm going to put up a Google form so that you can self-check your answers. All right? Good luck. I will be on the carpet if you need me.